from your house to your office and back again with maybe a few errands in between. That's probably most of the driving you do on a daily basis. University of Delaware professor Willett Kempton knows this. He knew it back in 1996 too when he was thinking up a more efficient, cleaner way for us to get around. Now imagine if you could drive to work or your office and you could actually plug your car in and feed electricity back to power your stove or power your computer. This is unlike other electric cars though in that it can pull power in from the electric grid to charge or push power back out to provide power to the grid when it's needed. It's called vehicle to grid or V2G technology. And just a little more than a decade after he came up with the idea, I'm riding shotgun with him as he drives the V2G car to the grocery store. When it's driving, it's a car. When it's parked, it can be a power plant. The car can provide energy to utility companies when they need it most, like in the middle of the day. Other times, the car's battery can charge up, like he does here at the university. This is a high power charging location, so it's got a bigger cord and we can really charge up quickly here. He talks to the car via a dashboard computer that displays how many kilowatt hours of energy the car's got left in its battery, how much electricity it needs, and how much it can afford to give back. I can set the car to push power back into the grid by just setting a setting on the dash, or I can leave it in automatic mode where the grid operator tells me when it needs power, when it needs more power, when it needs less power. They're buying kilowatts from individual cars. So by adding these up, you have a value uh, which, you can be, which can be sold on the wholesale markets. Something like that would require hundreds of cars. Right now, there's just one, this one. But even by itself, this car's got enough juice to power Kempton's home. It's putting about 12 kilowatts from that car through the house and out onto the grid. So everything in my house then is running off the car and my neighbor's house is running off the car and the next neighbor, and in fact, it's pretty much the, this whole side of the block. And while the car itself is carbon free, it really only is as green as the energy it's using. The amount of CO2 put out by this car, if you've got all coal, which is the worst possible electric system, is about the same or a little bit better than gasoline. But the more you shift to carbon-free fuels like wind and solar, the cleaner this car gets. If someone wanted to do this, is the infrastructure there for that? Now it is. But it would still cost you about 70 grand after the car's been retrofitted with an electric motor and V2G technology. 70,000 is definitely a lot of money, but it's not an outrageous That's amount right. of money. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's yeah. not a fuel yeah. cell car, half a million bucks. All the parts are within the range of stuff that's being made right now. From the University of Delaware for Discovery Channel, I'm Jorge Ribas.